Welcome back. We are here in the Upper Sanctum. And we are going to do a video on philately, which is stamp collecting, philately. You have uh, philatelic interests, is when you collect stamps and related material. And what you are looking at here is my collection collection of what is called postal history, basically envelopes that have been postally used in one way or another, or anything related, um, and a little bit of an offshoot to that is postcards, there's a postcard right here, I believe this is the, uh, this happens to be laying here, this is the Ashikan Reservoir, You've got these fascinating postmarks. Now, what's interesting about stamp collecting, you know, before I even started this video, I went on YouTube and looked, and everything related to stamp collecting had to do with money. And that really is absolutely sickening, because this is a very fascinating and interesting hobby, and money should not be the governing factor in anything. It's unfortunately, uh, money rules the world, but... This is a hobby where um, there's beauty involved, there's history involved, uh, a lot of interesting stuff involved. Um, I'm going to pull a few things out here, one second. All right, now, this box you see here, this is actually uh, stamps, not postal. Well, they call them covers, we call them covers, postal covers. These are actual stamps uh, that have to be put in... Uh, in some album, if they're, uh, you know, good enough to do that. I mean, some of them are just like fluff. You just keep them in here like this, like something nice like this. We're going to put these in an album. This is stuff I haven't gotten to yet. But that's stamps. You know, when you collect a stamp, the stamp is the stamp. You can only have, you know, I mean, you can have them in different condition, but a stamp is a stamp. When you have, let's see, there's a nice stamp here, see? For instance, this thing. So you take a look at this beautiful stamp. This is the 1850s. Does it say on here? Uh, you know, the values are very. Uh, forget about what it's written on there. Those values, uh, they change. It's like I said, money's got nothing to do with this. But um, I really, it would, these prices don't mean beans. You got to see what they sell for in the current market if you want to sell it or something like that. Oh, this is unused. Oh, fascinating. Got a little piece missing there, or it's got a stain on it, it's hard to tell. But anyway, um, you know, you collect this stamp, you have this stamp, it's a number 26, Scott number 26. Scott is the um, the catalog that uh, most collectors go by. Um, and you have one, and that's it, you have one. You know, I could get another one, but it ain't going to be much different than this one. But if you put this stamp on a postal envelope that was mailed, that someone wrote an address and all of us, now you have a piece of history. And therefore you have postal history. Yeah, minus stain. That's what that is. That's a stain. Yeah. Yeah, when they look at value on these things, by the way, they look at uh, the centering. You can see how the, uh, the design is cutting into the perforation. And it's a little to the right and a lot of clear more clear margin on the left except the, the per, uh, some some stamps you can't get them very and this is one of them they don't really come that that great they will almost all of them have some kind of little issues see they even rate this as a fine maybe if it was a different uh, stamp it wouldn't be even qualify as a fine well maybe it would I don't know anyhow getting off the beaten the beaten path here and off the topic so now you take this and you put it on an envelope and you have a whole different thing you this was used all over the country um well mostly in the east and um you can have it on 400 different envelopes and you have 400 different pieces of uh of uh, postal history incidentally this stamp and others like it of this of this vintage were demonetized during the civil war because they were uh 
you know, during the war, you had the southern states, and if the southern states took over a post office, they had all of this revenue, all these stamps. So they demonetized them, and they, they reissued uh, another three-cent stamp with Washington on it, a little different than this one. This, this, by the way, is the most studied stamp in the world, this one right here, this Washington stamp. It's got so many varieties. It's been studied. They know the plate positions of these things. It's just amazing, the study they did on this stamp. All right, now I'm going to show you one of these on the cover. Okay, so here we have that stamp on a cover. Now, this cover is postmarked St. Johnsville, New York. You can see the New York down there. It's a relatively large cancellation. They uh, tend to call these balloon cancellations addressed to uh, someone in New York City. Beautiful penmanship. And they did this without a <laughs> without a ballpoint pen. Anyway, <clears throat> and another thing about this, you can see how the cancellation is also canceling the stamp as well as acting as a postmark. This later became against the regulations because they felt the stamp was obliterating the ability to read the postmark. So they had to put the postmark over here and cancel the stamp by some other means. I'm leaving these in the plastic, by the way. I'm not going to take them out, so I'm trying to avoid the glare. Otherwise, it would take me nine years to make this video. Anyway, um, so this is bef obviously before they did that or before this guy got the memo, as they would say. Uh, but that's either that same exact stamp or a very similar variety. Because, like I said, there's so many varieties of this stamp, you have to really examine it uh, to tell one from the other. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this. Um, on the right and the left, there's those thin lines. On some varieties, it runs from one stamp to the other. Other varieties, it frames the stamp. There's all different varieties. These had to be cut out with a scissor. They were not perforated. And you could even see the remnants of the uh, neighboring stamp over here along the edge. On both edges, in fact. Yep, so that's the stamp on it. So this is what makes the cover interesting. Okay. And you'll find this on dozens and dozens of different covers. Rather than just have the stamp, you have an attractive thing like this and you have a piece of history. And sometimes on the back is the receiving postmark, which this doesn't have. Now, as I said, that stamp was demonetized. This is the one that replaced it. Uh, this is the, the Civil War stamp. This is postmarked North Shore, New York, which is Staten Island. This post office was open for a very short period of time. It's a very, very rare postmark. And this is a beauty. See, that's what makes it interesting. The stamp by itself, yeah, it's a nice stamp, but look at this. And North Shore was famous for using that paid, that paid plug right on the stamp. You see that on uh, on a lot of them. Not that I've seen a lot of them, but the, most of the ones I've seen have that. Here we go. This is going to Massachusetts. Get a Sometimes it has a receiving postmark. Now the back is clean. Okay. And then, of course, we have foreign covers, which can be absolutely gorgeous. There's one, 1936, an email cover from Manila, Philippines. Look at all these stamps. Via Clipper, this is gorgeous. Boston, Massachusetts. All these overprints. A lot of times they did this for the uh, for the philatelic value, which is fine. Look at look at those gorgeous cancellations, or overprints. I think they're just overprints. Yeah, because they made the man mail stamps. Yep, and here's one from uh, 1944, the Falkland Islands. Yeah, this is obviously not done just for postage. They did this, like I said, for its uh, philatelic value down the road. It's on the back of this one. Yeah, it's got more postmarks on the back. It's registered cover. Registered mail. Very nicely done. The depth of this is incredible. I mean, I could make a video a, a thousand hours and not cover everything. So we're going to just, you know, jump around and look at this and look at that and look at everything. And see how nice it is. And what beautiful things these things are. Look at these gorgeous stamps. 
These are works of art. Absolute works of art. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Let's fork around. Let's just take a quick look, closer look at these. Look at that. You know what a nice though? I got to find some. The uh, what do you call them? Victoria Falls Rhodesia. Oh, those are nice stamps. Yeah, these are gorgeous. And you know, again, I hate talking about money. I despise money, but it's such an inexpensive hobby. This is like, it's ridiculous. It's a shame that these things, as precious as they are, there's so few of them. And, oh, you can pick them up for a song. You can establish a beautiful collection. Let's see what else we can find. Here are two very rare covers. Postmark New York. And they are New York Firebrick Manufactory and Staten Island Firebrick and Clay Retort Works. And there's the man's name, Kreischer. He was the one who had the, the gigantic brick factory in Manhattan, and then he later moved it to Staten Island completely. This is, I think originally this was at the foot of the, what's now the Williamsburg Bridge. This is before the Williamsburg Bridge. That's how old this is. Well, the stamp tells us it's a Civil War stamp. This, the date's 18, looks like 1863 or 1864. It's a smudge. It's hard to tell. This one, you can't tell the date at all. It didn't take. You can barely tell there's a postmark there. This is what I was talking about, by the way. You got the postmark. And then there's the cancellation for the stamp. And they call these fancy cancels. The post, a lot of times the postmaster would carve his own design. Uh, so you had to have the uh, postmark on the envelope. And you had to obliterate the stamp so it couldn't be used again. And here's another one. It's hard to tell which one is earlier. Because the, they both have the same stamp. Notice the centering on the stamp is terrible. You know, it's off to one side. This one here isn't too bad. Yeah, this one's much better. Although it is, it's got a lot of white at the bottom. Neither one of them is that great, I guess. Anyway, nice cover. Established 1845. Interestingly, they're both addressed to a gas works. Well, I have no idea, but they are. This one is in Bridgetown, New Jersey. And this one is in Albion, New York. Beautiful covers. This one is an entire, they call these an, an entire, the advertisements are the entire cover. Just about, anyway. This one you just have the, more or less like a cachet. And there's the address where it was. Gorick Street, corner of Delancey. In New York. Beautiful, beautiful covers. This one I've had for years. This one I literally just got. Yes, these are very, very rare. So we keep them together, because they're both Chrysler, even though it doesn't say it here. That's obviously the same company. New York Firebrick and Staten Island Clay Retort Works. Staten Island's rich clay deposits. So when he moved out here, he had it made. He used to make brick, fire brick, all kinds of brick. Well, here's an interesting piece. Um, before we had stamps, <clears throat> and even for a while after they started with stamps, you would bring your envelope to a post office. Postmaster would plug it with the um, you know, place where you're mailing at the postmark and charge you accordingly. This was a nickel. And that's what that five stands for. That someone paid five cents. Um, it wasn't until, let's see, the first stamps were like 1847. It wasn't until like the 18, sometime in the 1860s when they made it mandatory that you had to have a stamp on the envelope. This was perfectly acceptable. You didn't have to put a stamp on it. A lot of post offices didn't have stamps. You know, we're talking about the 18th. This, actually, this letter, someone, you know, these things have been around for, you know, 100-something years. Had a lot of owners. So someone took the time to record the, the data on this one here. And this is a, a very old tag. Really, Brooklyn? 
November 3rd, somebody opens it and read it. He measured it, 30 millimeter circular stamp, 5 rate, 1851. Note from absent husband to wife. Absolutely fascinating. Okay, and that was the wax seal. That's a folded letter, it's not even an envelope. They don't even have envelopes. Envelopes were rare. Paper was rare. And you read some of these these letters, they're absolutely incredible, fascinating. A lot of dealing with health. You know, they were so concerned about health. Those days you got sick, you died. There was no medicine, there was no nothing. It was just unbelievable. And reading these things is completely, completely fascinating. Absolutely amazing. This is like history from people's lives. How the stuff got saved, we'll never know, but we're glad they did. You know, when you start collecting this stuff, you really need to have some kind of, uh, what do you want to call it, uh, a direction, a limitation. It's just too much. You can't collect everything. So, I obviously, you know, have my like of stamps. Those are obviously uh, something that... Uh, is not uh, directed by your locale, so to speak. Whereas the envelope, on the other hand, I collect envelopes, covers, as we call them, from where uh, I grew up in Brooklyn, East New York, specifically East New York, um, Staten Island, you know, where I spent uh, most of my years here. And uh, lastly, but not leastly, New York State, all these little tiny towns that are all over New York State, towns you've never even heard of before. And uh, here we have a nice Stapleton, Staten Island, uh, cancel on a uh, letter to Switzerland. Yeah, I can't make out an exact year on this thing, but I want to say it's probably 19... 10, 1915. Those three on the left here have a straight edge on the bottom. The bottom part of a sheet, probably. As they're perforated on the top and sides. And in the back is the receiving postmark. In Bern, Switzerland. I don't know if that's a date, a 19 or a 10. I have no idea what the heck that is. This is really interesting. They call this a bisect. Uh, well, you didn't need the value of the stamp, so you would cut it on an angle. Years ago, they accepted that. And uh, why they needed all this postage on this letter is beyond me. It's only going from Manhattan to Brooklyn, but you see this a lot. And uh, one way you could tell it's real is obviously because the postmark runs across. And uh, they call that tying it to the cover. So it's uh, that bisect is tied to the cover. Uh, let's move on. Yeah, There's an interesting envelope. New York, 1889. Nice, beautiful stamp. And look where it's from. The mayor's office. New York. Nice, uh... Nice seal there. Interesting stuff. Addressed to uh, Richfield Springs, New York. There's nothing on the back. I already looked. Sometimes there's the receiving postmark. Not on this one. Now, this is a really fascinating cover that someone used to scribble on. And even that scribble was done, looks like, 150 years ago. So we have here, I had to get the magnifying glass, this is in East Hampton, New York, cancellation. Uh, we can't read the year, but we know by the stamp that this is 1860s. Alright, 1864, maybe 65, something like that. Look who it's addressed to. President Tyler. Factoryville, North Shore, Staten Island. New York. 
What's interesting about this, in addition to the fact that it's addressed to President Tyler, is what that's called a mourning cover. It's black bordered, and I'll show you what the back looks like. There's the back. That's usually um, reporting or discussing someone's death. And Henson's called a mourning cover. But this is a really, really, really fascinating uh, piece of postal history. Yeah, he's Tyler had ties to Staten Island. Anything even North Shore is very rare. This is addressed uh, to North Shore. Factoryville was a little town. Yeah. All right, here we have yet another one having to do with uh, Tyler. This appears to be Mrs., I think. Looks like Mrs. John Tyler. That's, that's what I think that is. Stapleton, Staten Island, New Brighton. He's got New Brighton right over there. Staten Island. Beautiful penmanship. This is postmarked from New York, probably somewhere in Manhattan. Um, they put the stamp on the left side of the envelope. It's got a fancy cancel, and that's also one of those. Uh, Civil War stamps. I don't know if this is a variety. It is a very light rose colored variety of the stamp where it's just faded. It's hard to tell because the ink isn't faded. Nothing else is faded except for the stamp is very light. So that needs to be looked at. Beautiful cover. All right, here's an interesting one. Um, sometimes the towns were so small... They didn't, they didn't even use a plug. Um, they were just handwriting. They call this a manuscript cancel. This is, uh, appears to be Clearfield, Pennsylvania, July 19th. I don't know what it says. It's a single up there. I don't know what that says. 18 and three quarter cents. Figure that out. To Philadelphia. And it's a folded letter. And, you know, you could open up and check them out on the inside it's eight something i wrote in there i already looked 1838 every time you open these it takes its toll they're old they're crumbling they're starting to split and you can open them up and frame them but uh they're probably just best left where they are that's like this you, know, you gotta understand this this was the primary means of communication back then there were no telephones telegraph was in its infancy if it was uh, there at all, in a lot of places, and um, that was it. Mail was the way to go, the only way. No other way to communicate. Just amazing, amazing history. Here's another really nice stampless cover, as we call them, or folded letter or whatever. Because they were envelopes, <clears throat> but... Uh, these early days, most of the time, it's a folded, uh, folded letter. <coughs> Excuse me, Hudson, New York. Disconnectedly. And again, this is one where some collector was conscientious enough to do this. And here he describes what we have, the red 27 millimeter Hudson cancellation, March 13th. 12 and a half cents, 1824, discusses debt. And now we don't have to bother opening it up and causing damage just to see what the heck it is and to date it. And uh, the vast majority of these things have to do with real estate deals, with, with like this one, having to deal with debt and legal stuff. And, and then, of course, you have the, 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 the ones that are idle chit-chat, but... Uh, I want to say it's tilted towards most of them having to do with something to do with financial or legal. Like this one. Oh, now here's a real beauty. That some knucklehead ripped the envelope of the stamp. I can't believe they did this. They destroyed such a beautiful piece. This is from East Hampton, Long Island. 
to this lady, Caroline James Garner, no, Garner, Garner, 19 Skirmahorn Street, Brooklyn. Here's the letter. January 26th, 1856. Dear Sister Carrie. Caroline, Carrie, I get it. And he goes on to talk about how he received his letter. Pa sent him 40 bucks, which he paid his school bill. He didn't get the $37 yet from somebody. This is really funny. He's asking his sister if he could visit her, or if she would like to see him, but she should tell nobody. Look what it says here. But tell no one. I shall come quietly. I don't know what all the secrecy is about here. When you have read this letter, burn it up and tell no one that you have heard from me. And yet here's the letter 150 years later. <laughs> Very nice. Look at this. If you desire, you can let Margaret, make me a cake and send it by the Long Island Railroad Express. And if this is convenient to you, he wants a cake. And he'll be thankful. Brother Charles. Look at this beautiful penmanship. Write to me as soon as you get this. Very nice. Anything on the back of this envelope? I don't think so. Nope. So hopefully he got his cake, this guy. Here is another very fascinating letter. Very old. Surprisingly intact. I guess it depended on what kind of paper they had. If it was, you know, uh, low in wood pulp and high in cotton, it lasted like this. This letter is dated New York, March something or other here. It looks like 1801, 1802, something like that. It's hard to read. I mean, he's referencing land that's been parceled up and talking about uh, documents and certificates. See? Uh, dated 1770. This is amazing. Look at this. Dated July, 16th July, 1770. 1774. It's very difficult to read this stuff. You can, but you gotta like really stare at it. County of something there. It's all legalese. Look at that signature. Harry Peters. Your obedient servant. Elijah Jenkins, looks like. Now, this letter, folded letter, interestingly, it's his copy at the top. State of New York. Looks like it says controller's office. That's a venue. We kind of write that when we notarize stuff, don't we? I do hereby certify. Yeah, this is some kind of uh, legal document. About accounts, blah, 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 blah. Very detailed. 1803. Albany, 9th September, 1803, Elijah Jenkins. Some money has been discussed here. And what's really, really, really nice about this folded letter and it's dated, and this is dated 1804. I don't know what all these dates are, but it's obviously very early. It has this wonderful New York, what we call the clamshell cancellation. 
Yep, that's from New York clamshell cancer. Paid 17 cents. Addressed to Albany. That is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece. Really nice piece of history. That clamshell cancel is really nice. All right, here is a really, really fascinating thing. Now, this is something, I don't know where the envelope is. I found this in my collection, but this is the type of stuff you find sometimes in these envelopes. Now, check this out. This is from this company here. What is it? Uh, Raymond's and... It's hard to read this stuff. Kibart, something like that, whatever it is. I can't even read the damn thing. March 22nd. 1876, okay, and uh, they are located in Detroit, Michigan. They're writing to someone in Proctorville, Virginia, it looks like. Look what they reference. They're talking about, we are getting more money from our western trade which is better on account of the black hills excitement they're talking about the great sioux war of the black hills of 1876 this is three months before custer got massacred in the black hills this is just incredible history here. This is as history is being made. This guy is writing this letter. And they're talking about business, of course. 25 pounds of pea, whatever that stuff is. And at the price he's talking about here. And he wants to know if he wants oats or feed. Look at the signature. Look at this. This is done with a quill and a bottle of ink. And depending on the ink, sometimes these letters fade. They fade away. This is good. This one looks beautiful. This one really, really held up really, really well. This is amazing history here. The Black Hills excitement. Three months before Custer got it. Incredible history. This one is completely, completely fascinating. Um, it is a letter dated January 19th, 1863, from a soldier. His name is Daniel Donahue. He's a Staten Islander. He enlisted for the Civil War. He's a Civil War veteran. And he wrote letters to this William T uh, Taylor. Yeah, Taylor. Marshland, Staten Island, New York. And uh, I researched his name online, and I was shocked to see that there's a website. And they have, I think, four or five of his letters published. And uh, this is one of them. I was in total shock. I got this probably off eBay. I don't even know how many years ago. And the letter is in there. The letter is in there. And... Uh, the letter is on the internet. Look up Daniel Donahoe, Civil War veteran, and you will see this letter. You will see this letter. You'll see this envelope. And uh, I don't know if they show the back, but they certainly show the front, and they show the entire letter, which I have. And, the, and there's notes at the bottom. It's like you were, it's like a blog. You're able to leave comments. Somebody left a comment that he transcribed these letters for somebody years ago, and they don't know what happened to the letters, and blah, blah, blah. Well, here's one of them. Yeah, very interesting. Completely fascinating. A yeah, civil, beautiful letter from a Civil War uh, soldier from Staten Island. He's down in, uh, he, he, I think he says he thinks they were going to get moved to the Carolinas from, like, the Washington area or something like that. Yeah, beautiful piece of history. All right, now when it comes to storing these things, um, we'd love to see them all in albums, but that's not possible. This is the slipcase, by the way, for this album. 
you can see it's a huge huge album this is a really big one this is my hand next to it um, storage albums like this are very expensive they have to be uh, archivally safe which you have in here many of these are handmade they have cushioned covers and they're just gorgeously made I don't know if some of them are made in Germany they might all be made in Germany this is a company called Lighthouse my opinion they make the best um, this album I got at a stamp show and apparently I don't remember because it's been so long since I bought it and I'm only getting into organizing these things now but uh, apparently it came loaded with all these sheets now this in the front of four vertical postcards that's the size anyway there's really not a whole lot in, uh, in vertical material and after that comes the horizontal ones which I have a letter in there already up cover I'm just starting to load this up this is where the uh, horizontal stuff starts and a big book like this you could fit two four six to a page you know decent sized covers nothing large and the uh, if they have nothing in the back you just slip another one in the back behind it some of these have <clears throat> a black backing the black backing is two-sided but if you have you have information on the back of the cover um, you want to be able to show that so you use a one that's clear on both sides now I have some stuff loaded in here we get to the part now where it's two per page so you got six per page here then two per page this book by the way is called the maximum they got all these buzzwords for their products and lighthouse calls this the maximum you on their website and you type in maximum binder and you'll see this thing the empty binder today I just bought another one because I'm in more space uh, the empty binder is $77 but like I says they're made absolutely beautifully so here's some covers I put in here as you can see you want the backs to show oh no no I stand corrected this is a cover I put back to back they're two covers this is one cover that's another cover look at that a bisect two different stamps that's really really unusual that's a beauty that is very unusual yeah that's nice see if they got a plug in the back you really want it to be visible so I have all these nice covers in here these are the large ones so like I says two per page if they got nothing in the back you put them in the back you got four per page look nice advertising cover yeah really nice look at that was a Lindbergh stamps Lindbergh seals I believe yeah those are actually cute little Lindbergh seals I never saw them before this is the uh, Long Island Railroad in Brooklyn when they removed it off the ground used to write on the ground there's very early airmail covers anyway on and on and on so you have two per page and as we go along you get into one per page Let's bend this over and what do we have here my birth certificate from Brooklyn and some other I see these are two-sided see it's black so it's two-sided but again you want something that you don't have to see the back of it this is from the world stamp show that I attended and you can put big stuff in here see? all these huge things there's a nice large long unfolded um, stampless letter 1822 here's a sheet post office fresh from Egypt a friend of mine gave these to me he brought them back from Egypt here is uh, Arizona Bridge stuff. Indian bonds, 1896. I mean, you could it's just loaded with stuff. Stock certificates. I collect all kinds of stuff. Look at these beautiful stock certificates. Pan American Airways, New York Central Railroad, Pennsylvania Railroad showing the horseshoe curve. Look at that, how gorgeous. So that's how we store these things. And again, these albums are terribly expensive so you have to be discriminating in what you put in them because you can't put everything in an album 
you take your best stuff and put it in the oven. And a new one I'm getting, I'm going to dedicate it mostly to postcards. I'm going to move this, these postcard uh, holders into the, uh, into the new one. So I bought extra sheets also. We're going to need a place for our very important postcards. So there you have it. Like I said, that slides in here. Slip it right in. And there you have your album and its slipcase. And we have the smaller ones, like these I have on the floor here. These take a different sheet, a smaller sheet. And I just ordered one that takes these things, the document pockets. Because those binders are a little too small for document pockets. Here's another binder here. So, we're going to get this stuff organized. Um, this is how we store our overflow. I mean, you just look at how much stuff I have here. And this is nothing compared to what some guys collect, what some guys have. So, I have all this stuff. And if I had to put all of this in albums, it just wouldn't be financially feasible and uh, they don't all deserve to go in albums like I said there's a lot of fluff a lot of overflow a lot of common stuff but the, the really interesting rare stuff that deserves some kind of recognition we're gonna get these things in albums and this is our little uh, abode up here where we hang out me and usually Josephine Michelle likes staying downstairs in fact she's down there now taking a nap and uh, my antique radios, got our classical music playing, collect instruments, and artwork. We do framing, I do all kinds of stuff like that. And that's that. So that's a little uh, synopsis of my extensive uh, postal collection. I have tons more in the cabinet down there, stamp-wise anyway. Got a lot of stamps. You know what, let me see if I can find some for you. Now, just to show you the size difference, here is a regular album compared to the maximum. I mean, look at the difference in size. And this thing holds those sheet protectors. This, no, I'm sorry, it doesn't hold the sheet protectors. It holds the, they call them Vario uh, protectors. We'll open it up and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, it's out of the slip case. Again, a very high quality binder. These, these like I said, are handmade. And these take a smaller insert. These are very special, archivally safe inserts. A lot smaller, a lot smaller. These are single page. <clears throat> Look at some beautiful Algerian stamps. These are called cross gutter block of 16 of this denomination and the other denomination block of 16 then we come into look at the beautiful stuff I mean I confess I bought these already mounted but that's great they're not hinged they're in these protecting these protective things which are mounted and as I said it's good for stamps there's more because you know stamps don't have that problem with size but when you mount them to an envelope it's a different story this is a beautiful first day of issue card for this airmail stamp. These are two-sided also. And these hold stamps, regular stamps. Okay. They got them in all different sizes. All, you know, the height, how many per, per page, large, small, medium, they got it all. Yeah, there, see this one here? It's for larger stuff. There's more beautiful stamps. These are mostly foreign stamps, which are absolutely gorgeous. And look at this, Costa Rica. Look at that gorgeous stamp. Look at these with overprints. Oh, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Stamp collecting is a fascinating thing. I don't know why more people don't get into it. They're miniature works of art. They're history. You learn about countries that you never even heard of. They're just beautiful. Yeah, let's... Take a gander here. Let's take a look at this one. Look at that, how gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. 
Well, this guy moved. We gotta fix him. And you never, never, never touch stamps with your hands. You don't have to. You use one of these things. These are stamp tongs. Hmm? These are beautifully made, professionally made. They grind them. So the tips are very flat. You can get them anywhere. They'll go right underneath the stamp. Okay, that's what they look like. There's all different types of tips, sharp tips. This is a spade tip. But they're very, very finely ground. Also made in Germany. These are made by Shogard. These are gorgeous. These are kind of like souvenir stamps from the stamp show in New York, in the, I think in the 30s. And on and on and on. There's some imperforate, meaning they have no perforations. These are American stamps, National Park series. Revenue stamps, postage due, everything imaginable. Well, there's another one we gotta fix. See, when these albums bounce around, these things tend to move. So you gotta be careful when you handle your albums. You don't wanna knock them around. Beautiful American airmail stamps. And that's about it. So now you see how we store these things. Oh, this is nice. This is interesting. I bought this mounted like this. The Argentina era. See the era? I'm going to show it right there. I think I might have showed this earlier in the video. And the dot on the forehead. Believe it or not. All these little things. Yeah, I got it in the album. We put it in the album. And that's that. So, I hope you enjoyed this. This is certified, by the way. This is a certified cover. You send it out and they send it back with this, uh, with this opinion, as they put it. Yeah, genuine usage, blah, 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 blah. Very nice. There's the, that's actually a picture of it, and there's the actual cover. Okay, so we'll close the book on this video, I think, for now. And I hope you enjoyed learning about my stamp collection and my postal cover collection, uh, which is intermingled with my antique radios. There's a beautiful antique radio antenna. And... Uh, Till the next time, the kids are uh, okay. My Josephine is out with my wife, and Michelle's downstairs taking a nap, which is why you don't hear no screaming. And that's that for now. Thank you for watching, and take care.